The Mandinka are one of the largest and most historically influential ethnic groups in West Africa, belonging to the wider Mande ethno-linguistic family. Their origins trace back to a region spanning modern-day Mali, Guinea, Senegal, and the Gambia. The Mandinka rose to prominence during the 13th century under the leadership of Sundiata Keita, who founded the Mali Empire after defeating the Sasso king Sumanguru Kante around 1235 AD. The Mali Empire became one of Africa's greatest medieval states, dominating trade routes that carried gold, salt, ivory, and slaves across the Sahara. During the Mali Empire, Islam became closely associated with political power. Many Mandinka rulers, including the legendary Mansa Musa, were devout Muslims who sponsored mosques, Quranic schools, and scholars. However, Islam at that time was often blended with traditional animistic Mande beliefs, leading to a syncretic form of Islam that persisted for centuries. By the 16th to 18th centuries, Mandinka elites in coastal regions, particularly in Senegambia, were deeply engaged in the Atlantic slave trade. They captured war prisoners and sold them to Portuguese, French, and British merchants in exchange for firearms, cloth, and other goods. However, not all Mandinka leaders participated willingly. Some resisted both slave raiding and colonial intrusion. One of the most notable Mandinka leaders of the 19th century was Seymouri Touré, founder of the Wasalu Empire. A brilliant military strategist and statesman, Touré united various Mandé-speaking peoples in modern-day Guinea, Mali, and Côte d'Ivoire. He resisted French colonial expansion through both warfare and diplomacy, creating a centralized Islamic state modeled partly on the earlier Mali Empire. Despite fierce resistance, his empire was eventually conquered by the French in 1898. For this video, I have gathered the raw genomes of 14 Mandinka men from the Human Origins dataset. I have used academic tools such as Admixtools 1 and Admixtools 2, which are developed by Harvard, but also my own tools, such as Trait Predictor and Mageplot, to analyze their DNA and how they relate to other African and world populations. Consult this FST chart created with Admixtools 2. According to it, the closest populations to the Mandinka are the Gambians, Mend, Congo, Igbo, Yoruba, and Kikuyu people, all West Africans. Somalis are the closest non-Sub-Saharan African population to the Mandinka, due to their significant share of Sub-Saharan African ancestry. Interestingly, the Komani are even further from the Mandinka than Ethiopian Jews. The closest Eurasians to the Mandi ended up being the Tajiks and Turks. Europeans were significantly closer to the Mandinka than East Asians or Amerindians. I constructed a model to estimate the share of archaic hominid ancestry in Mandinka. Admixtools 1 was used for this model. As you can see, I am not using any Neanderthal anchors, but am instead using gorilla and chimp as anchors to capture archaic shift. This way the Altai Neanderthal population, which I use in the lefts, acts as a proxy for all archaic admixture, rather than just Neanderthal ancestry. Consult this FST and F2 matrix. It was generated with Admixtools 1. I have used this matrix for the subsequent analysis of West African and Eurasian genetics, and the ways in which they are related. Consult this PCA which includes all the populations from the FST matrix. We see two distinct clines. First is the cline from Europe to West Africa. On the European extreme of this cline we have Russians, and on the West African extreme we have Congo peoples. The Mandinka plot firmly in the West African cluster. Another cline we can observe is the West African Komani San cline. Multiple populations fall on this cline, including the beauty pygmies, Komani, Hadza, and even Kenyan Bantus, although they are much closer to the West African endpoint of the cline. I removed the non-African populations from the dataset and tried running a 2D PCA again. This time, we see basically the same picture. A cline from North Africa to West Africa, with populations such as Eritreans, Ethiopians, and Somalis bridging the gap between the two. We also see the same cline we saw in the previous PCA, from South African hunter-gatherers to West Africans, with the Komani, Beauty, Hadza, and Kenyan Bantus falling on it. I decided to try making a PCA including only sub-Saharan African populations without Eurasian admixture, meaning no Ethiopians, no Somalis, not even African Americans. On this PCA, the picture we see is quite different. We see West Africans, including the Mandinka, in one tight cluster. The South African Bantus deviate slightly toward the Komani, while Kenyan Bantus deviate slightly toward the Beauty Pygmies.
This gives us insight into the kind of groups these Bantus encountered during their migration. Bantus in South Africa encountered a Komani-like population and mixed with them, hence the slight shift. Bantus in Kenya mixed with something beauty-like. I used that same FST matrix to generate a phylogenetic tree, including African and Eurasian populations. We see two major clusters being formed. One is the Eurasian cluster, and another is the Sub-Saharan African cluster. Interestingly, some African populations actually fall in the Eurasian cluster, such as the Egyptians and Tunisians, that form a subcluster with Russians and Yemenites. Even the Somalis and Ethiopians fall in the wider Eurasian cluster, although they are quite separated from such populations as Yemenis and Russians. The major African cluster is subdivided into two not very strongly related subclusters. One is the South African cluster. You can see such populations as the Komani, Beauty, and Hadza in this cluster. The other major African cluster is the West African cluster. Populations that fall in the West African cluster are all very closely related to one another. The Euclidean distance between the West African and the South African cluster is around 360, which means that these two subclusters are further from one another than Somalis and Russians are. This goes to show how significant the difference between South African tribes and West Africans is. I used the FST matrix I generated to construct a Vahaduo model, modeling African populations as a mixture of Dinka, Komani San, Congo, Beauty Pygmies, and Russians. Here, Russian is just a proxy for something West Eurasian. I am not implying that any African population actually has Russian admixture. Here we see that the populations that pick up the highest Russian are Yemenites, Ethiopian Jews, Somalis, and Hadza. The African Americans also pick up about 11% Russian. Notice the significant disparity in distance between the African Americans and such populations as Somalis or Ethiopian Jews. This disparity is caused by me using Russian as the West Eurasian proxy. Since Russians are closely related to Western Europeans, they are a good proxy for European ancestry in African Americans. But Russians are very distant from the Natufians, who are the basis of West Eurasian ancestry in Somalis and Ethiopians, and therefore the distance in these groups is higher. Dinka ancestry seems to peak in Kenyan Bantus, Somalis, and the Hadza. South African hunter-gatherer ancestry is present in the South African Bantus, as we saw with the 2D PCA, and also in the Hadza. Beauty pygmy ancestry is present to a small degree in all West Africans, but peaks in the Hadza, and is also found to a small degree in the Kenyan Bantus, as we already observed from the 2D PCA. Additionally, I'd like to point out the presence of West Eurasian DNA, proxied by Russian, in various regions of Africa. Gambians and the Mandinka pick up over 3% of Russian-like signals. We see 10.4% Russian in the Kikuyu, but that is to be expected, as they have some Nilotic and Cushitic ancestry, despite being Bantu speakers. Let's move on to the trait predictor results of those 14 Mandinka men whose genomes I have gathered. The most common Y lineage among them was by far E1B, with only one sample carrying the related E1A lineage. Most phenotypes fell in the Congolid or Nilotic group, but one sample scored an Ethiopid phenotype. Eye colors were evenly split between medium and dark brown. No sample scored light brown eyes or lighter. Predicted hair color was uniformly black. The most common predicted skin color was dark brown, although there were samples that scored light and medium brown. Almost every sample was predicted to have kinky hair, with one exception, who scored curly as his predicted hair texture. Almost every sample scored a snub nose shape, with one exception, who scored equal for the odds of snub and Greek nose shape. The Mandinka were significantly predisposed to taller height and lower odds of male pattern baldness, in stark contrast to what Europeans typically score. The Mandinka were predicted to have average odds of autism. Some carried the lactose persistence variants in LCT, and almost every sample was predicted to have high empathy, in stark contrast to what Eurasians typically score. The Mandinka scored low for odds of allergies, and not a single sample carried hemochromatosis risk variants in the HFE gene. Hemochromatosis is often called the Celtic curse, due to how prevalent it is in Northwestern Europe. Seems it isn't at all common in Mandinka. The Mandinka were heavily predisposed to Zyprexu-induced obesity and weight gain. Surprisingly, three samples carried risk variants for autoimmune disease in the HLA gene. This is surprising because autoimmune conditions are typically more common in Europeans. The Mandinka scored average for odds of Tourette's, 
average for odds of unipolar depression, and very high for odds of bipolar disorder type 1. In my trait predictor, the SNPs used for the polygenic risk score of bipolar type 1 overlap heavily with those used for schizophrenia. The Mandinka scored average for the odds of atrial fibrillation, and surprisingly low for the odds of cardiovascular issues. They scored average for the levels of bad LDL cholesterol and low for the levels of good HDL cholesterol. The Mandinka scored high for the odds of hemoglobin E disease, high for the odds of type 2 diabetes, and high for the odds of Alzheimer's. Only two samples carried risk variants for polycythemia vera in the JRK2 gene, in stark contrast to Eurasians, who are strongly predisposed to polycythemia vera in comparison. Most Mandinka did not carry testicular cancer risk variants in KITLG, in contrast to Eurasians who mostly do. Only two samples carried risk variants for blue-yellow colorblindness in the OPN1SW gene, in stark contrast to Europeans, among whom the rate of colorblindness variants is much higher. Every single samples was predicted to have low odds of obesity based on FTO genotypes, in stark contrast to Eurasians who tend to score intermediate for the odds of obesity. The Mandinka were heavily predisposed to syncope. You can purchase their genomes in 23andMe format from the link in description of the video. There you will also find links to purchase my products and services.